Hi, Relaxed Recaps here. Today I'm going to explain an erotic drama film called Nymphomaniac. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. On a dark and stormy night, a man named Seligman is walking home from the market. He comes across an unconscious middle-aged woman named Joe, who is lying on the ground. She's severely beaten and bleeding. Seligman wakes her up and tells her that he's going to call an ambulance. Joe, on the other hand, advises him that she doesn't require an ambulance and that if he calls the authorities, she'll leave before they arrive. Seligman notices her pain and asks if she wants anything, to which Joe responds that she would like a cup of tea. Seligman brings Joe into his home and prepares tea for her. He lets her shower and gives her a clean set of clothes. He inquires as to what happened and whether she was robbed. However, Joe claims that it's her fault and that she's a bad person. Seligman tries to talk about what she meant, but Joe is hesitant to reveal it. She claims that if she's going to tell him, she must tell him the entire detailed story from the beginning. Joe begins her story by describing her physical desire during her childhood. She claims to be a nymphomaniac who found her physical pleasure at the age of two. When she was seven, she and her best friend, whom she refers to as B, used to pour water on the bathroom floor and drag themselves through it for pleasure. As her mother knocked on the bathroom door, they promptly came into a halt and mopped the floor. Joe says that she adored her father, who was a doctor, but that her mother was a cold witch. Joe used to enjoy climbing the rope in PE class because she liked the sensation of it being between her legs. Seligman then cuts her off and questions why she thinks children are sinful. According to Joe, she's not asserting that all children are sinful, only she was. Seligman claims he doesn't want to see sin in her story, but Joe argues this because he doesn't know the rest of it. She reveals that as a young nymph, she needed to lose her purity. She knew a boy named Jeremy when she was 15 and he had a bike, so Joe thought he was sophisticated. She visits him and asks him flat out to take her purity, which he accepts. Jeremy then asks her to strip and humps her a few times before going back to mend his bike. But Joe is disappointed with this and swears she will never be intimate with anybody again. However, several years later, Joe and her friend B dress provocatively and board a train without purchasing tickets. There, they bet that whoever has intercourse with the most men by the time they arrive at their destination will win a bag of chocolate sweets. The two then proceed to wander past all of the compartments, inspecting all of the men. Joe joins a family and a lonely man in one compartment. As recommended by B, she asks a lot of questions and the lonely man offers to take her to the restroom, where they end up having intercourse. After that, Joe enters another compartment. She pretends to be upset and claims that Betsy is terribly unwell. When the two men inquire who Betsy is, she claims it's her dwarf hamster. One man is more compassionate towards her than the other. When the man takes her hand, Joe asks him to show her the restroom, where they engage in intercourse. Later, B and Joe are out of men, and B is ahead in points. They then proceed to a first-class cabin where a train conductor requests tickets. Joe checks her handbag and informs that she might have misplaced it. But B claims she hasn't purchased a ticket for the awful train, which is too sluggish. The conductor hands them a ticket worth eight pounds, but B rips it up. Unexpectedly, a man in the compartment next to them pays for their tickets. Once the conductor has left, B expresses their desire to be as nice to him as he's been to them. But the man simply denies her erotic advances. B now has a score of 10 and Joe has a score of 6. B promises Joe 5 points if she can seduce the reluctant man in first class. So Joe takes this as a challenge and approaches the man, noticing he has a gift. She inquires as to why he had brought a gift, to which the man replies it's for his wife. Joe points out that he travels first class but purchased the present at the station. He claims that he was in a rush because they had been trying to have a kid for a long time and his wife is ovulating now, so he's hurrying home to get her pregnant. Joe now understands why he didn't sleep with them. However, Joe approaches him and tries to seduce him once again. The man pleads with her to stop, but she refuses and mouths his junk against his will. Joe has no regret for pushing him to completion and she cheerfully eats from the bag of chocolates at the railway station later. In the present, Seligman is impressed, but Joe is confused as to why he's not disgusted by her. Seligman claims that all she's done is provide people with an experience to cherish. He claims that if the load is kept too long, the sperm will die or deteriorate. Perhaps it's because of her that the man might now have a child. Seligman then leaves the room and returns to find Joe asleep. 
She wakes up minutes later, and they formally introduce themselves. She notices a rugelach cake on the platter and is surprised by his use of a cake fork to serve it. Joe believes that eating pastries with a cake fork is inappropriate. She reveals that she knew somebody who ate rugelach with a cake fork every day and then proceeds to tell about Jerome. In the flashback, Joe is seen having intercourse with numerous different guys, and she tells each of them that they were the only ones who satisfied her. She starts a club called Little Flock, in which a group of girls pledges not to sleep with the same man twice and to not develop feelings for them. Joe gets the nickname Vacuum Cleaner because she's well known for her sexual aptitude. But during a club meeting one day, B admits to sleeping with the same person three times and is scolded by Joe. B informs Joe that she doesn't know anything and that the secret element to intimacy is love, but Joe angrily walks away. Joe then applies for a job at a printing press, where she's interviewed by a woman named Liz. The company's boss is revealed to be Jerome, the boy who took Joe's purity. He explains how he's handling the company while his uncle is sick, and he decides to hire her despite her inexperience. Afterward, Jeremy tries to initiate a relationship with her, but she refuses him. Instead, she starts sleeping with the other company employees. Joe is alone in the office one night, in Jerome's space. She then begins to feel a shift within herself, longing to be one of Jerome's belongings, picked up and dropped repeatedly by him. She realizes that she has fallen in love with him. After a few days, Joe eventually gives up sleeping with other people as well. She discovers Jerome's address, but never rings the doorbell. One day, she writes a letter expressing her feelings, but it takes her a month to summon the guts to submit it. When she eventually musters up the courage, Joe finds Jerome's uncle back at his desk. He informs her that Jerome is traveling across the world with his new wife, Liz. After that, she's also fired by Jerome's uncle, as she has no experience or skill. Now that Jerome is gone, Joe increases her hunt for men. She compares her body to a supermarket door that opens and closes on its own due to a highly sensitive sensor. A few years later, Joe has a large number of lovers and is having difficulty remembering who is who. She listens to her voicemail and takes notes. She devises a way to choose at random, because it has become hard to maintain a record of individual relationships. Joe uses dice to gauge her mood, with a lower number indicating she is not interested and a greater number indicating she is. She knows this makes her entirely unpredictable, which drives the man insane. One day, a lover to whom she refers to as H refuses to leave her flat as Joe prepares for the arrival of her next lover. Joe tells him that he must leave since she knows he will never leave his family for her. She then kicks him out and prepares for her next boyfriend to arrive. Soon after, there's a knock on the door. H has returned, having left his wife and children and returning with a suitcase. The wife apologizes for invading and explains that she wanted to make sure he arrived safely now that he's made the important decision. Inside, the woman leads the children into the bedroom and shows them Joe's bed, informing them that this is where his father was pimping around. She tells the children to memorize the bed so that they might recall it in therapy years later. Soon after, Joe's other lover also arrives. Mrs. H accepts the flowers he is holding and introduces the new lover to all of her kids. She then asks Joe how many lives she can destroy in a single day. Five, fifty, or hundreds? Joe clarifies that this is a major misunderstanding and informs the kids that she does not love their father. Miss H claims she's only saying this to make them feel better, because if this were a joke, it would be a terrible one. She then advises the kids to leave before things become too horrible. As one of her sons returns to hug his father, she pulls him away, stating she doesn't want to give his father a guilt complex. Mrs. H then returns and slaps her husband before screaming her way out of the building. In the present, Seligman inquires as to how this experience affected Joe's life, to which she responds, not in the slightest, adding that one can't build an omelet without breaking a few eggs. Seligman tells her that some people blame the addict while others feel sorry for him. Joe then reveals that she was an addict out of lust, not necessity. In a flashback, Joe pays a visit to her sleeping father's hospital room. He wakes up, and Joe informs him that her mother will not be arriving. He defends her by stating that she's afraid of hospitals, but Joe calls her a cowardly idiot. That night, Joe's father awakens while yelling and sobbing. She attempts to calm him, but he doesn't respond. Soon after, the doctor arrives and takes care of the situation. So after that, Joe wanders around the hospital and has intercourse with an orderly worker downstairs. The next day, her father dies, and a rose has been placed on his chest. Joe claims that after his death, she had no sensations and felt ashamed. Her mother is also in the room. 
but she soon leaves, leaving Joe alone with her father. She goes on to explain the humiliation she felt came from witnessing her dead father was that she was lubricated. Hearing this, Seligman informs Joe that he knows she wants to portray herself in a certain way. Her father had a dark attitude that she is worse than everyone else, but this was not true. He tells Joe that responding erotically amid a crisis is extremely frequent. Joe appears to appreciate him expressing this, but she doesn't express it verbally. After that, Joe begins to discuss her three lovers. Once again, we see one of her lovers whom she refers to as F. Scheduling is difficult since she's currently sleeping with seven or eight males. F is always an hour early, with flowers, and patiently waits in his car for an hour. Joe occasionally allows him to come in and have coffee while she finishes with her last partner. His most precious goal is her fulfillment, and she grants him privileges that none of the others have, such as allowing him to sponge bathe her. Then, we see her with another lover, whom she refers to as G, the only lover for whom she's willing to wait. When he eventually appears, he doesn't enter immediately, because once the door is open, all he has to do is satisfy the woman. During this time, despite her accomplishment in managing men for up to 10 intercourse sessions a day, while also working a full-time job, Joe still feels lonely. One day, while taking her normal walk around the park, she discovers fragments spread over the path. She starts picking them up and realizes that they're ripped up photos. And when Joe puts them together, she discovers that they're photos of Jerome. Suddenly, a hand reaches out to grab hers and it's revealed to be Jerome. It turns out that Jerome came there because he'd just gotten into a fight with his wife and therefore tore up their vacation photos. After that, the two are reunited and have a passionate intimate session. However, Joe suddenly zones out and Jerome inquires as to what is wrong. She repeatedly states that she's unable to feel anything and ultimately breaks down in tears as the movie comes to an end. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.